Hey everybody, this is part two, and we're going to do something very similar to what we just did uh, in terms of we're not actually solving a coding challenge. We're just going to kind of walk through how we would access uh, different levels of values inside of a nested array, or in this case, a nested object. Uh, so we're going to walk through, and in this one, nothing to do with alphabetically. We just want to get all of the values. Um, so if that's the case, the first thing we're going to do is copy this, bring it over to our replit, and okay so for these first four our task is relatively easy right we just want to say console.log user at something so we'll copy that and put it in four times and the first one's going to be user at id i'm going to use bracket notation but you want to keep in mind that since we know the names of all of this we could absolutely use dot notation uh, in fact, let's use dot notation for name, and then user dot name, user at username, and user at email. So pretty straightforward. We've got our three Clementine Bouch. Um, cool. So now we run into a little bit of an issue because if we were just log. Uh, user at address, you'll see that we're going to get um, an object. And, and we want all the values inside of that object. So what we're going to do is something that we could have done for the last exercise, but it's, a, it's trickier to do it if you have like a randomly jagged array. It's a little easier to do it in this uh, sense. So what we're going to do is going to create an alias. We're going to say a variable address object is equal to user at address. Now, this is just going to create a reference. It's just going to say, uh, rather than having to say user at address, I'm just going to say address object, and that's going to refer to this object right here. You'll notice we actually have another object tucked inside of there, so we'll do something similar when we get to that point, but for now, we can uh, simply move through our address object and access the values from within there. So the first one is going to be street, I'm going to interchangeably use, um, also we can throw our semicolons in there. Uh, semicolons in JavaScript are one of those where it's like they exist, you don't have to use them all the time, but for your purposes as a beginner, you might want to just use them uh, everywhere until you find out that you can't use them in a certain position. There are a couple places where it's like it might seem like one should go there, but it doesn't, and you'll figure those out pretty quickly. Um, there's one situation where if you don't have it, the code will actually interpret something differently. And it basically works if you have a set of parentheses like this at the beginning of a line after which you did not use a, a semicolon, it might think that you're trying to call a function from the previous line. Now, that's actually a, like an obscure enough reference not to really go through. It just doesn't really come up that much. But just keep that in mind. So address object.street. Uh, we're going to have a couple of these. So address object dot suite, and let's do this one in bracket notation. And city zip code. And just to prove a point, let's go and do one for geo. So we run this one. I'm going to get a nice output up until the geo. The geo is itself an object, so let's do our alias again. We'll say geo object is equal to the address object at geo. Now this is the exact same as saying user at address at geo. But if we were to say all of that, it's going to be user at address at geo at lat. It's like, well, we could just say geo object point to what we want, and then geo object dot lat is going to get the job done for us. So geo object at lat, geo object at long. Come on. If we run this, now we're looking good. We have all of the values going out so far up to this point right here. And this is actually where our address object ends. If you look at how this is highlighting, once we get down to here, we have two in a row, phone and website, where the same format that we had here is going to work again. So if we scroll on down here, say, uh, what was it, phone and website. 
Keeping in mind, we are using dot notation and bracket notation interchangeably because none of the keys have any kind of special characters inside of them. There's no exclamation points, there's no spaces, they're just one word strings, so we can use interchangeably dot and bracket notation. So let's run this. Looking good, all the way through there. Now we've got a company. So first thing we'll do is console.log user at company. And what we'll see is that we get a big old object. Well, not that big, but <clears throat> excuse me. We get an object that's big enough to justify using an alias. So we'll say company object is equal to, uh, some people like to say geo object. Other people like to people abbreviate it OBJ. I'm showing you both just so you get an understanding that uh, doesn't really matter that much. Company object is equal to user at company. So if we're looking to access values from within that, it's going to be the name of the reference to the object we're looking for, in this case, company object, or we could have said user at company. Company object dot name. Uh, company object dot catch phrase. And we'll do the last one in bracket notation. Company object at corporate tagline and that's it those are all the values so this process of steadily working through an object is something that's very useful to be able to do and you want to consider that once we get inside of any of these once we have access to what the uh, what the object is ref or a way to refer to the object we can interact with that object the exact same way that we would for any other situation um, we're going to get into that in the rest of the lessons, but you want to keep in mind that there's nothing really special that happens once you get the pattern of how this works. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this, for this part of this lesson. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.